In this lesson, we are going to look at how to problem solve using technology. So again, if you've watched the previous lessons, you are going to need a graphing calculator or a graphing piece of technology in order to follow along, and you're going to want to try some of this on your own. All right, so this problem has three parts. It says a rocket is launched into the air from a bridge that is 50 meters above the ground. The function that models the height in meters of the rocket over time t in seconds, is that the height is equivalent to negative 4.9 times the time squared, plus 58 times the time, plus 50. Or in other words, again, we're going to be using a graphing calculator. It may be useful to picture this just as y is equal to negative 4.9 x squared plus 58 x plus 50. So let's go ahead and just graph that function. So y is equal to negative 4.9 x squared plus 58x plus 50. And I'm going to hit graph. OK, so at this initial point, what you've noticed is based on my window going from negative 10 to 10 on each axis, uh, I don't see the graph. I don't see this rocket. It's somewhere out in space. It's beyond the window that I have here. So I definitely need to see way higher up and way further to the right. Okay, uh, And we know from this information here that the y-intercept is actually 50. If you looked at your 7.1 and 7.2 information regarding standard form graphs. Uh, but I think the rocket still is going way higher than that. So I'm going to guess. I'm just going to change my window. I'm going to move my y-axis up to, let's say, 300. Again, you can just practice with this window. And I want to see further along my x-axis. I need to see when the rocket hits the ground, in other words. And I'll make it 20, and I'll see what that looks like. Okay, The more practice you get with this, the better it will look. Uh, so that looks pretty good. All right, so what we are going to do, well, that's the graph. Maybe I'll just draw it. So our window, in this case, is from negative 10 to positive 300 on your y-axis, and from negative 10 to positive 20 on your x-axis. So that is what the graph that we're looking at looks like. And it looks something like that. Okay, So uh, the first question states this. When is the rocket 100 meters above the ground? So in other words, I mean, it's 100 meters above the ground somewhere when y is 100. But how do we use technology in order to solve that? And the easiest way to do that is to understand that this means that y has to be equal to 100. Okay, So we are going to also graph that function. If you looked at the previous lesson, you're going to understand kind of what we're looking for. But I'm going to graph because I want to know when this function intersects with y equaling to 100. And the neat thing here when I hit graph is I get a straight horizontal line that shows me a height of 100. So it's pretty visually easy to see that the rocket is going to hit 100 meters on its way up and on its way down. And if you looked at the previous lesson, so we have two functions that we're putting in. Again, we're putting in y is equal to, and you might want to write this into your notes, y is equal to the rocket function. You can put that in the y1. And y2 is y is equal to 100. Uh, so if we do that, now we're looking for, maybe I can just put in a purple line here, and I'll, I'll use green. We're looking for these two points, which are intersects. Okay, So what we're looking for is the intersects. And there's two points. So if you looked at the last lesson, you press second trace intersect. And you can pause this or, or uh, rewind it. I'll do it pretty quickly. First curve, I'm guessing. Second curve, I'm just pressing enter three times. And the first time that it hits 100, and you can see y is equal to 100, is 0.94 seconds. So that would be one of our solutions. At 0 0.94 seconds, it's one of our solutions. And the other solution is over here. So if I press second trace, intersect, and it takes a little while to get there, but here we go. And the other time that it hits a height of 100 is at 10.9 seconds. Okay, 
Uh, part B, when is the rocket 250 meters above the ground? In this case, I'm not going to graph it just in order to save time, but if you understand what we're trying to do here, we want to now know when it's 250 meters above the ground. So uh, you are going to put in the regular function, y1 equals negative 4.9, so the rocket function, plus 58x plus 50. And y2, in this case, we want to know when the height is equivalent to 250. So let me just go into y2 and change it to 250. And let's go ahead and graph it. And the interesting thing here, which is really useful to note, is you can see that this rocket never reaches a height of 250 meters. Uh, <clears throat> so your answer here is never. Okay. And part C is a differently worded question. You can use the exact same graph in this case. Okay, and I'll do it relatively quickly. <clears throat> so the graph looks something like this. The question says, how long is the rocket in the air? So if you look at the path of the rocket here, what we're actually trying to do is determine when it hits the ground. It's in the air, starting at time zero, until it hits the ground right here. And if you recall from the original lesson in 7.3, this is called a zero because we want to know when the height is equivalent to zero. So I'm just going to get rid of my y2. And what I'd like to calculate now is this zero. I want to know the value of x when y is zero. So second, trace, and zero. And these questions ask us for a left boundary, a right boundary, and a guess. So go somewhere left of the zero or where it hits the ground, go somewhere right, which is somewhere down here, hit enter, and make a guess, and hit enter. So it's in the ground until 12.64 seconds, so that's the value of x. So we're looking for a zero, and it's at 12.64 seconds. Uh, we're just going to look at the key ideas, so this lesson is a little bit longer. Uh, if you flip the page, we're going to look at the key ideas of this section. And here they are. Uh, key idea number one. The zeros or roots of a quadratic function, and this is for the entire 7.3 study guide, the zeros or roots of a quadratic function correspond to the x-intercepts because their values of x where the value of y is equal to zero. Uh, secondly, there may be zero one or two roots. So if you look at this graph right here, there's absolutely no x-intercepts. For this graph here, there is one x-intercept. And for this graph here, there's two. So you can have zero, one, or two roots. <clears throat> and the first way we solved in the original lesson is if one side is equal to zero. So if we were solving an equation like x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals zero, here's what you do. Using a graphing calculator, you'd graph the corresponding quadratic function. And then secondly, using a graphing calculator, you would determine the zeros, which in other words are roots or x-intercepts. And on your graphing calculator, if you're using the same one I did, you'd press second, trace, and zero. Okay. In the second part of 7.3, we looked at an example where neither side equals zero. So we're looking at an example like x squared plus 2x is equal to 2x squared minus 7x, or something like that, okay? Uh, in that case, we wanted to know where the two functions are equivalent to each other. So using a graphing calculator, you graph each side of the equation in y1 and y2. Secondly, you're going to find that they intersect. So using a graphing calculator, you're going to determine where the functions intersect using these press second, trace, and intersect. And thirdly, the solutions the solution or solutions is or are the x <clears throat> coordinates. So we just want to know what value of x where these intersect. Okay. And lastly, we got into word problems. And for word problems, you may need to substitute a value into the function before solving. That may be useful. And secondly, for word problems, consider if your answer makes sense given the context. Okay, uh, and what you're going to do now is continue on to the 7.3 assignment from your textbook, and you will need a graphing calculator for this assignment.